and we're back to work i mean it's kind of nice to be back it's a beautiful day it's just gorgeous out it's warm it's sunny it's not much to complain about although there is this thing that happened where the back of my boot split there this morning so there uh, i got a gap that snow is getting in which should have been sweet i could have used the bindings from my snowshoes to kind of tighten it up but uh, then the, as soon as i got back here the binding broke so uh now i'm inching around if there's a way to suffer i will find it i don't know if you can hear that or not but uh, the loggers are working kind of nearby it's sort of noisy in here sort of ruining my wilderness experience I, I was thinking maybe i'd go over there and be like can you guys turn down the volume please yes all powerful wizard please do not turn me into an animal or something okay well if you're just a bit quieter maybe i won't turn you into an animal but uh if i was to turn you into an animal is there a preference for what kind of animal you'd like to be yeah, I'm, we'll use hand tools so it'll be quieter. We'll we'll use axes. No, I'm afraid axes are too noisy. I'll be able to hear them from a long ways away. Chop, chop, chop. Not good enough. Yeah, we'll we'll use hand saws and, and horses. Just don't turn me into a seagull. Fuck seagulls. It probably goes something like that. Can you guys turn down the volume, please? I must carry on now with working. Start my January, start my gear with a broken snowshoe. And it's my own fault too. The boss even said, make sure you bring a second pair of snowshoes. And uh, at six in the morning, I thought he said, uh, make sure you have a second coffee. I just plain bailed on that one. Luckily we got more shoes with us. I saw three moose this morning on my drive in, two of which were on the Barkerville Highway and it was dark. One of which tried to kill me. Freaking guy. There's two logging trucks in front of me. And when they went by, yeah, uh, you're flying solo in that truck. You're just gonna walk out to the mine. Copy that. When the two logging trucks went by, he decided to run out before I came through. And I almost got T-boned by a moose. Literally, I had to almost hit the ditch and uh, hit the gas real hard. And this guy was gonna run right into the side of my truck. Just had it timed perfectly. So I think I swore as I often do when things like that happen, because I'm working class, and working class people tend to swear. So watch for them enemy moose. It's like a Star Wars game always to me, speeding down the road. Watch for enemy moose, keep tight. First day of January, 2022. It's been a nice day. Except for almost getting killed by a moose, and not drinking enough coffee, and having my boot come apart, and my snowshoe bust, and then all, and then working too. I mean, yeah, of course. No one wants to be doing that. Like seriously, my line's gotta go through that. Day two of my work week. See, this is a perfect example of what it absolutely sucks to snowshoe through. But I'll get there one way or the other. Weather's so warm and so nice right now. And of course, uh, lots of talk about the atmospheric river returning to BC. People seem to be getting upset by terms like polar vortex and atmospheric river that uh, meteorologists use. Uh, keep in mind that two things have happened. A, we've had, uh, because of the influence of climate change, some extreme examples of these things, of uh, polar vortexes, uh, atmospheric rivers that have got everyone talking and it's got the subject in the popular imagination and popular discussion. These are terms that we've been using for a long time. The term atmospheric river is from like 1990, I believe it is. And it's an appropriate term. It's when you get a, a fine narrow band, usually coming from the tropics, uh, riding between generally two high pressure bulbs will squeeze it through potentially or a low pressure bulb bouncing off a high pressure one. So you have a long narrow band that kind of looks like a river. And uh, seriously, the one that uh, caused the big floods in BC a couple months back, uh, there may have been 20 to 25 times the amount of water that's found in the Mississippi River in that at particular atmospheric river. So we're seeing stronger examples of it than we've seen in the past because the warm, the oceans are warmer and more moisture is getting into the air. I mean, that's a simple equation and we have data to prove that. It's it's not an argument in the to anybody involved in science and meteorology. It's not a not up for debate. <laughs> People in uh, interior weather and wilderness watchers seem to be upset by this. I don't necessarily uh, believe that everyone who comes to the group and starts attacking persons like myself have... Uh, genuine reasons to so i've had hate mail come to my inbox more than people think and that's why there's just no tolerance for it for now on an interior weather and wilderness watchers if one of the moderate moderators is going to mute you it's going to be for 28 days straight up and if it's a second time you're gone we're not messing around we're keeping the group public so that posts can get shared because life and death information goes around sometimes through our group and uh, we want to keep that accessible to public so that people can share our posts and join easily so therefore, the tolerance level for bullshit is going to be especially low for now on. 
Uh, I will not accept people sending me angry messages to my box. Furthermore, whatever was going on, whatever, I don't even know what everyone was fighting about. I didn't see any of it. And uh, I know my good Betty Benson stuck up for me. And he got a, a mute as well for three days. And, and uh, sorry about that, Benson. It really wasn't me. I don't know what was going on. And I backed my moderators. She did what she had to do to, to shut the arguments down. Keep in mind that just because you get banned or kicked from the group, it might not have been me who did it. So don't just, there's like, there's a, quite a few moderators that are involved in this group. It's a team effort. And sure, it's uh, been my project and I started it and kind of am the visionary of it. But uh, I can't do it alone. And I don't want to do it alone. And uh, those people who are helping are just as important to the life of the group as I am. So don't think there's any division between admins and mods. We'll both boot you just as fast. So Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers is a project I started in uh, 2014. Just inviting 200 people I knew in to check it out. And uh, eventually in 2017, about five days before the big fire outbreak, I predicted uh, accurately the timing of it to within the hour. And people saw that and the group started to grow. We had another big growth this last year. When I last checked our statistics at 7,000 people, we were 70% women and most of them middle-aged and older. That's mostly our demographic. Uh, farmers and horse people seem to be a big part of our demographic. See, you get an idea of who we are just from that and what we're gonna accept and tolerate. I don't use the group to basically share anything but BC weather and wilderness news. So that means uh, when I read a research paper on climate change in Antarctica, I don't share that to BC weather and wilderness watchers. And in that same way, I expect you to keep focused on what it is we're here to talk about, which isn't the bigger picture necessarily, which isn't what you think, what I think. It's just what the weather's doing right now and trying to keep people safe. Occasionally, uh, because we've had extreme uh, climate change influence events such as the heat dome and uh, those bad polar vert vortex earlier in the year and uh, an extremely strong pineapple express that came through that's another word for that uh, atmospheric river it's the local word for that particular phenomenon in bc pineapple express you know a lot of these things have happened so occasionally we've been saying like well this is a climate changed i mean look at what's going on entire towns are burning down just like nothing the bc forest is in the interior it appears in places to be desertifying almost right so it's concerning and we see we have good reason to think these things i don't necessarily expect that uh every all the fourteen thousand eight hundred people are going to be totally well-adjusted people i do expect that some people are coming to the group with uh, their own motivations and that their attacks aren't uh, shouldn't be legitimized or even dealt with by any other way but just muting them and booting them i don't have any policy on the top of the group that says no sexism racism homophobia and bigotry of all that kind misogyny it should just go without saying in the two, year 2022 that we're not going to tolerate you being super rude to people call me a snowflake for it if you want that's up to you to think i'm the one walking around the wilderness alone getting beat up see how much of a snowflake you are come out here and walk with us so if you are spouting hateful trash and you're talking about things that aren't relegated to the weather and wilderness and British Columbia news, you'll get the boot. We're not going to uh, fool around. No hard feelings, and I don't even care. I don't even care what that guy was arguing with everyone about yesterday. Didn't even look at the messages, didn't look back through the log. Just I just got back and said, oh, you gave him a, a mute? Good job, moderators. Now let's boot him. We don't want him. We don't want him to come back and have to see that crap again. He can go find his weather news somewhere else. I don't think that's what he was there for anyways. He was there to attack me personally. But you want to come attack me? Come do it. Be a keyboard warrior behind some screen. Keyboard warriors. I love interior weather and wilderness watchers. My history as a storm chaser has brought me to this place. Yeah, I've only intercepted one tornado in British Columbia so far. So it's definitely uh, been a long drop in my tornado chasing career, but compared to uh, what I was seeing in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, some of the great storms I got to witness. But nonetheless, I think that the severity of thunderstorms continues to increase in British Columbia. And we will see more intense thunderstorms, more severe weather. You look at the last 10 years, uh, severe storm, the, the number of severe storms in British Columbia has been going up steadily. So the weather is a great uh, topic to talk about because there's a lot to talk about. Welcome to Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers. Please be our friend. And that, my friends, is the ultimate Widowmaker. Look at that thing. It's just hanging by a branch above me. Standing right underneath it is totally safe. Not. But you know, the thing is, like, I'm a danger tree assessor during wildfires. You can't go into a dangerous forest to assess it without going into a dangerous forest to assess it. That's funny. I'm, I'm listening to Animal Farm right now. And Dave's listening to Animal Farm right now. That's a Did lethal... Anybody else read that book? Lethal tree. Napoleon the pig supposed to be stolen? 
Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> and Snowball represents Trotsky. Yeah, that's right. And Lenin was major. <laughs> A little political intellectual talk today. People being keyboard warriors sending me messages like, call me hippie, and I got a message calling me a city boy last week. I'll tell you one thing, like, I'm not a mean guy. I don't go around talking to people, much less bothering them. But uh, I didn't become a crew boss of an all-native fire team because the boys thought I was weak. So come on out here and call me hippie. Find yourself tied to a tree covered in fucking my lunch. Friggin' snowflakes? Nothing's funny anymore. Friggin' snowflakes. Nah, man, lots of things are funny. It's just that you're not one of them. I totally dislike violent behavior, violent language, abusive patterns, aggressiveness, putting people down. I've really gotten better at that one over the years. Just, I dislike continuing a fight that's going nowhere. You'll pretty much always see me just drop it or walk away. I just don't care. I don't care about anything enough. I love violent movies, so. But the other thing is that uh, my willingness to do anything to stop uh, abuse and violence uh, includes looking at my own patterns in my life and the things I've said and done and ways I've treated people. And it also means a willingness to stand and fight sometimes, and especially if it's uh, something I can stop right now. Man, it's a beautiful day. Southern BC is getting snowed on tonight. Highway 3, Paulson Pass, Kootenai Lake, all those places. Up over the uh, Salmo Creston Pass, I'm sure it'll be just nasty. That's one of the highest passes around. And it may be the highest paved pass in BC for all I know. And uh, freezing rain possible through the interior. It's actually a little warmer in the central interior than it is down in the uh, in uh, the Kootenays and places like that. So we'll see, uh, say if Quinell gets rain or if it gets snow or if it gets freezing rain, but uh, it's pretty warm at the uh, ground level right now. So I could easily see it just coming as rain. So it depends here, maybe snow, but that'll all start moving out. And then uh, by the weekend, uh, well, we'll be ready for a new story. I like how the spruce grow twisted and every once in a while when they break over, that twist still stays there. It's so cool.